Again, well. uh, the, uh, it's been a busy week for you? Busy week, yes. I've, I've Your guests from across the water are way back, are they? Yes, they've gone back and um, uh, thankfully we've been busy. So. Yeah, you're, they're, they're more or less, I like to regard them as the international arm of FPM, but it's, it's not quite that. Well, it's not, it's actually quite, it's a, it's a first and opposite of what they do. They basically, uh, they have an international brief and to be honest with you, you know, John Sim, after he left here, I think I told you, he was heading to Johannesburg, he was back in wow. San Francisco. He was in Russia and Germany all that week. Yeah, you know, so that's busy a time. Busy yeah, time. Well, they get it. You know, well, you and I know this region. They know the world. That's their brief. They may well, not know the individual detail, but let they have them a brief for the world. Let them bring the world to us. Yeah. You know, uh, the, in uh, business this morning, I'm just looking uh, Invest Northern Ireland. John John McAllister having a go at Invest Northern Ireland. Uh, companies in Newry and Armagh constituency <laughs> receiving just five thousand pounds of tourism investment from Invest Northern Ireland. Uh, South Down was awarded almost forty thousand, but Fermanagh and South Tyrone received eight hundred and forty thousand. North Antrim three hundred and eighty four thousand. Uh, North and South Belfast each received between one hundred and forty and one hundred and ninety thousand. McAllister's saying, disgraceful, Invest Northern Ireland, answer, Invest Northern Ireland, saying, not our fault, we don't sort of select, we respond to demand, and not enough people from this area, these areas that we know and love, are apparently applying for grant aid and assistance uh, to Invest Northern Ireland to develop tourism. Can you believe that? Well, I, I can understand both points of view. I, I think, to be fair, uh, the, the bigger challenge to invest in I would be if, if John McAllister is aware of any quality projects that weren't supported. Yes. And I think that's the bigger issue, to be yeah, honest. Yeah. Uh, I think it would be unfair and it would be wrong for us to expect any uh, grant or funding authority to take out a map and, that uh, and take out a map yeah. and just divide it no. by the number of counties. I think they that's wrong, that. and it's wrong yeah. to do anyway. Yeah. But I do think that um, the figures are so... Uh, the variance is so great that it yeah. leads, you to, leads you to concern or maybe why are projects not making yeah. application. But Do I we think not have ideas here? That's well, what I, want I, I, I think maybe, you know, what you'd like to do is look at it over a couple of years. The previous year, maybe it was distorted yeah. the other way towards yeah. us. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Projects just don't happen overnight either. But no. I think the big question there is, the big issue there is, for our tourism infrastructure here and our private sector providers in the tourism and hospitality sector, have we been utilising the funding opportunities that were available to us from the non Ireland from Invest and I. I'd like to think we were. You know. Well, hopefully this will, I think to be fair, what probably John McAllister is trying to achieve is to get an awareness of the issue, to try and get people to, uh, to be conscious of that. It's good to see McAllister coming out again and coming forward again. There was a, there was a period of, uh, of quietude there as a consequence of the row within uh, NI21. Yeah, well, I think we need all our local MLAs uh, proactive, and I think, to be fair, as, as a rule of thumb, broadly, they, they, they try to do that. Mm. Rory has bought a great new house, a million-pound mansion on the shores of I have to say, Lock. it looks very nice. Doesn't and, it? Uh, yeah, I mean, you're, you're talking about brand, you're talking about... Uh, uh, ambassador, that's a great ambassador, a good brand, but you can see equally how, um, if you look at the brand of Tagger, you can see how how thin brand can be, you just need a couple of uh, wrong moves, and the, not necessarily winning, winning will be fine, he won't lose his brand if he's not winning, mm. but uh, it, it's not easy for a young person, and I think no. to be fair, uh, the challenge for Rory will be to continue to try and keep his feet on the ground, which he's done so well. Of course, well. you know a thing or two about golf. Well, I, I wouldn't claim to know too much about it, but uh, I enjoy golf. You're there as you're, you're, you're a mentor for young people, and every year you encourage I at en Warren Point. I uh, enjoy golf, and I think it's a great sport. I think Rory McElroy, uh, I mean, Rory McElroy, uh, Graham McDowell, Darren Clark, uh, Podrick Harrington, Paul McGinley, um, Shane Lowry, these, Michael Hoy, these lads have all been in recent years. I mean, mm. going back a little bit for Dave Smith, now vice captain this time in the Ryder Cup. These people, Christy O'Connor Jr., Christy O'Connor, Fred Daly. I remember as a young lad, Fred Daly. Goodness gracious. Uh, Coming to one point. No, the opposite. I remember going into his, he used to sit in the pro shop, professional shop in Balmoral. Wow. And, and he was a, a lovely man. He would have uh, found, t obviously, that time, mature years of his life. Mm. He would have come over and said, young McCormick, or young, who are you? And shook your really? hand. Yeah. So we, we uh, very happy memories. I also remember meeting Harry Bradshaw. I met like Harry Bradshaw at Port Marnock. 
Um, you may remember Christy O'Connor singing yes, on a very do. famous occasion. Absolutely. Came to Warren Point. I was a young man who remembers this. He, yeah. he stayed in the Crown Hotel. I think that people couldn't, could not believe how he could hit the ball, never mind after his evening of the <laughs> night before. <laughs> and uh, he came down and won the... Yeah, Jim O'Neill Hospitality. I think he came down and he won the Tato competition at uh, Warren Point. But, you I know, have to ask you, would you ever want to win a Tato Cup? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would. By the way, I, uh, I'm sorry, Tato. I digest. Unlike you, I acknowledge the tremendous contribution they've made to this country, and they I continue to make. And we, and we need more Tato. I know the contribution they made to my waistline because, over yeah, the years. Well, so do I. But the bottom line is, they are a very successful brand. Yeah, they're a huge indeed, brand. Indeed, a very successful company. But it's a it's a brand that's been grown or organically from brown earth of Northern Ireland, the potatoes. It yeah. was it never existed until a Northern Ireland entrepreneur made it happen. Yeah. And I, yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, no doubt about it, it is, it is, uh, it is it's, it's, it's gathering momentum as a global brand. Mm. One of the things, uh, Tesco, what are they doing at Tesco? Executive suspended over a profits probe. 250 million, four executives at Tesco, suspended after the supermarket giant uh, uh, admitted it overstated its profits uh, guidance to the city by 250 million. First, yeah, what's that well, about? Uh, to be put it bluntly, I don't know because it's so mm. judicy. I suspect there's a legal case pending, but uh, I suspect the allegation mm. is concerning creative accounting mm. and uh, whether the accounts give it through and fair view, and whether people deliberately tried to use their skill to mislead the public or potential investors. Yeah. I think that will be the challenge, and that will be where the defence will have to come in. The four people will have to show that uh, they didn't create erroneous records and that uh, there was a rationale for the figures. And pre presumably the, 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 the reason for doing it would be to enhance the profitability on the stock exchange, that if the profits are up, people will invest more well, and more profit will then ensue. Well, a number of reasons. Uh, PLC's figures are very important from a confidence point of view. Mm. They're also important from a director uh, from a director's bonus point of view, for a director holding on to his job. They're also very important for subordinates of directors and very important, mm -hmm. ultimately, for internal management power. So uh, there are a number of things, but the most serious allegation is the one you correctly highlight. It's yeah. the, the external market perception. Massaging the figures. Yeah. yeah, for goodness sake. Autoline innovation goes international. Nuri firm attracts global interest over Telematics products. That's young... Uh, Young Michael, Michael Blaney. Yeah, Michael obviously is doing tremendous work there and is being very creative and innovative in terms of his commitment to R&D. And this is a re research and development. And this is a project that Michael himself has taken a tremendous personal interest in over the last two to three years. Yeah. And uh, it's great again to see uh, this area being so innovative because as you and I have said before, the differentiating factor in terms of uh, margin premium yeah. is research and development, it is getting in there early, it is leading the world and uh, uh, to be fair to Michael it's a, it's a, tremendous, uh, it's a Gen, tremendous achievement of going down that road. Again, local man who has done, who's done magnificently, you know. And, uh, oh, yeah, no, Michael's a very, a very hard worker and a very pleasant person. Yeah, and there's a Fermanagh firm, uh, S, uh, SD Kells, we see the third generation, family run retail, business. Retail, retail, retail. Shops, the famous SD Kells. Yeah. And it's again family, you, you come to that quite a lot and you say the importance of family firms. Yes, but, but only those that adopt best practice. Clearly they are doing it. Uh, you yeah. cannot put, um, it's really important that you run your business, whether it be family or yeah. otherwise as a business, and you don't run it around the kitchen table. No, no. People must be promoted for their ability and their outputs as opposed to their ability. Absolutely. Blood. We lost a great friend of business in the last week. You may not have known him, and maybe you did. Oliver Brady from Castle Blaney. Yes, I knew the Shabra. Uh, yes, a great character, Oliver oh. Brady. Yes, I, 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 I met gracious. Oliver Brady on a few occasions. Didn't know him that well, but he was one of those characters. Great character. You know that I met him? Him I, and his wife. Uh, yeah, she, uh, Rita. Yeah. I went to them f seven years ago to do a nationwide program on Shabra recycling. Yeah, yeah. And he noticed a badge on my coat that was the badge of the SMA, Society of African Missions. Yeah. I said, oh, do you, you're a supporter of the SMA. I said, yes, I am, Oliver. He said, what do you do? And I handed him my, my brochure. And he looked at it and he said, oh, Rita, look at this. That was the beginning moment. That was the moment of conception of 50,000 euro 
that Oliver and Rita, and I thank them from the bottom of my heart on behalf of the children, would put into our schools project and health project in Nigeria. It's not lovely. It's a great story. Well, great people. it is in giving we receive. He, he, well, made a, he has made a difference. He has made a huge difference, you know. Mm -hmm. There's that thing, Northwest Angels pledge a million for startup. Remind people what the angels are. Well, I, again, I didn't get a chance to read the paper this morning. You certainly test me this morning. Uh, Ronald. Oh, well, you know angels I'm back not, to front. I'm now on an exam here, but I think <laughs> I think the subject you're referring to but is... But you know about angels, business is, is angels, new, is Halo new, and all of that. It's a new business angel network in the Northwest. Yeah. How does that it. work? But basically what happens is these are quite often people who have been successful in business and have some spare cash. Yes. And they want to put together a fund which in turn will allow them to invest in quite often smaller growth businesses mm. Uh, and take a proactive role in management or otherwise non-exec or come in and out. And they hope that their money will, f will assist with the funding of growth. They'll fill the gap yeah. in the funding that's required to get quite often from uh, embryo yes. to revenue generation. So, uh, yeah, no, it's a, very, it's a very good cause. And I must say, the HALO organization I'm very familiar with. I mm. keep active. I know it very well. And I think this is a welcome uh, development in the Northwest. Absolutely, the uh, it's 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 huge and it's ongoing and it's 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 like a kind of. It's not just money. That's the key no. point. You're bringing life's experience, skill, and you're looking yeah. at, you know, they they're, they've formed a network and they'll say they look at potential investments and then mm. they will say, I think uh, Rowan Hand should represent us in there. He should yeah. maybe go on the board there and see yeah. what's going on. Yeah. It's like a dragon's den kind of thing with yeah, a little bit more, more hands on, more yeah, hands on. Yeah, yeah, but now, not unlike it. Yeah, not unlike it. Lack of career guidance in school brings me to some of the figures yesterday. I had Sean Rogers talking about it, uh, where uh, people, uh, young people in the education system, are doing poorly in mathematics and English, the core element subjects, and this is. Uh, dis, uh, disempowering them in later life when they go into business. What do you think about that? Is that an issue? Well, I'm not an education expert, but without doubt, uh, English and maths are very important mm -hmm. subjects for life. Um, in terms of careers, I can only give you my personal view. Um, my, I have a young lad currently at the Abbey. Uh, the, the careers teacher there is a lady called Mrs. Katrina McGrath. Um, I have to say that uh, the career, he's, he's just in fourth year now, but the careers advice briefing document they got at the end of third year, I haven't seen its equal in yeah, business. It it's was good. As fine a document as uh, I have to say I've ever seen, and uh, I, I was very impressed. And I'm sure other schools are the same. So I think that uh, it's important when we're talking about these matters we don't talk too much in the past. Mm -hmm. I think without doubt, in the recent past, the quality of uh, career information mm -hmm. uh, to pupils was poor. Uh, I think that that is improving. But you know, one of the biggest problems we have to deal mm. with is not the careers information, it's a snobbery of parents. Huh? Goodness. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it always amazes me, the ignorance of parents. And parents, unfortunately, are having a major impact on the careers their mm. children choose. And mm. maybe at times they should just stand off. Yeah, leave, leave them alone. Because, let, you know, yeah. I think you and I have said this before, but I have a firm belief that whatever you do in life at any moment, whether it be an extracurricular, if you're not enjoying it, you won't achieve yeah. your best. You, so it's really important that whatever people choose, they want to choose it. Yeah. Because if they're happy at it, they'll perform better. May I say, there's no more sophisticated businessman and parent than yourself, because uh -huh. you, you operate <laughs> in both roles. I wouldn't and you say do that. It, you I operate ma magnificently in both roles, but you keep your, you're very grounded. You're very, on, you're very, well, I, you're I very practical. You're saying, parents, stop it and have a bit of sense and stop uh, putting down expectations that are unrealizable for your children. Listen to the voice of the child talking. Well, what, what I, I wouldn't want to be, I, I think what I'm suggesting is that no one should be a clone of someone else. That everyone's independence and individuality should be respected. And why it is very important that parents, uh, and indeed schools, provide a framework uh, for encouragement, an environment for encouragement, uh, an environment to, to get to get young people to appreciate that yes, education is very important, Indeed. but it's not the only factor. It's it, it's an important factor of the balance of life, yeah. and and other factors t together with education combined 
produce that whole of person yeah, that we're looking yeah. for. And uh, I do think, I'm not for one moment suggesting that home and parent environment is not important. It's very important. Very important yeah. But what I am suggesting is that you have to allow the individual, uh, you have to empower the individual mm -hmm. uh, to make their own decisions, albeit to ensure they have the information to make that decision. Mm -hmm. But I think then you shouldn't say to the individual, for example, oh, there is a career you should be following. There's tons of jobs. Just, just you follow that career and I bring you here and I bring no, you. I, no, I no, think no. that, for example, I interviewed a person um, six months ago. Mm -hmm. He came to accountancy. And he's not from this area, but his parents were doctors. And I said to him, uh, you have a checkered career. You're finished up here. And he said, yeah, well, he said, um, you know, I was uh, disowning my family but not doing medicine, so I went and started to do medicine. But he said, I hated every moment of it. Wow. And then I left. Now, that could just equally be an accountancy or whatever. Do you get the point I'm saying? Yeah. The point yeah. I'm making here is there obviously, and this guy is not from this area, by the way, but there obviously was implied pressure on that young lad that it was a tradition mm. to be that his father and his grandfather were doctors and he should carry on. Now, to put that a different way, it would have been lovely if he had chose medicine yeah. and probably would have been very successful at it. And it mm. would have been, given the, the insights from his parents and grandparents, he probably would have made a phenomenal doctor. Yes. But once he chose not to do that, I think it is important um, not to put too no. much. I mean, I remember my own case. Um, I, I wasn't sure whether I'd leave school at 16 or not. Mm. And uh, my father never said, don't leave school, but he gave me a summer job. Uh, he, he owned the uh, steelworks. Oh, of course he did. Yeah. He gave me a summer job <laughs> counting bolts. Counting uh, bolts. Uh, and there was no windows in the room. It was very hot for about two weeks. <laughs> and I can always remember, I'm convinced Driving that every time that er every time I left the room to go and get a cup of tea or something, I think the bolts I counted were put back in again. Because <laughs> after two weeks, <laughs> I had long made my decision <laughs> that I was happy <laughs> forever. <laughs> and I was heading back. <laughs> forever and ever, the Abbey. <laughs> So, uh, so, yeah, so there's various ways of getting the message across. Yeah. No doubt, parents can play a key role in providing mm. the opportunities for their youth to meet people, to talk yeah. about careers, to, to uh, find out further insight, mm. practical mm. elements of careers. Yeah. But ultimately, I keep coming back. Whatever people are doing, they need to be happy doing it. Yeah. Oh, your microphone has fallen down. We need to do something about that for you. Let me do that for you. Sorry. We're really sorry about this. These things happen in the best. We we'll talk medicine there briefly. I have this, this hold that loose, okay? I have this belief, I have to tell you, that in my next life I want to be a surgeon. I was interfaced with surgery in my television work, and it's the most wonderful job in the world. It's just I'm so full of admiration for what surgeons do. But recently I was interfaced with uh, the new emergency department at Daisy Hill. Uh, my dear, beautiful former wife fell and uh, dislocated her elbow. So I, in that context, I was up there and Dr. Connor there in, in, in the admissions place. It's beautiful, modern, uh, sophisticated, state-of-the-art, blue chip, caring, caring, caring up there. A wonderful facility. Yeah, well, to be fair, I think we're very fortunate in this area. And I, what I like about this is a pride in it. The lifts are clean. Oh, yeah. I detest going into to hospitals. And there, are, there are some not too far away from here where there is writing on the lifts. Oh, my God. Where the corridors are dirty. Mm. Where the toilets maybe aren't that clean. That tells me a lot. Mm. I find Daisy Hill, maybe it's just my experience, but there's a level of pride from the team yep. delivering the yep. care. Very much from, so. From the domestic to the consultant. Um, and I think that it's that community pride, that community desire to care and help and enhance people's lives and the longevity of people's lives. Yes. I mm. think that's something that we should be very, very, very proud, proud of. of. And there's a willingness there to try and make things different, to try yeah. and make things more positive. There has to also be a recognition in a community of size that everything won't go perfect. Mm. Uh, the person that made a mistake never got anywhere. Yeah. And absolutely. particularly in health. Mm. There will always be the odd mistake, mm. but tragically, if we don't allow people to take those mistakes, then the greater good will suffer. Absolutely. So I, I have to say that I've always been a very uh, strong advocate and admirer of Daisy mm. Hill. Um, you probably know from times back I, I uh, led a short campaign to provide the, the, the uh, prayer room. The prayer room. Prayer, yes. Uh, we provided that. I was going to mention that. A very good you. team was provided that in about uh, eight weeks. Well and, used uh, too. 
very well used. And um, funny enough, I was up in the hospital, Shima, my the autistic child mm -hmm. was up in the hospital recently, and uh, I, I meant to go in, I just didn't get I planned to go in, but didn't get a chance, but I'm told it's very well used. Actually. Oh, it is, of course. Beautiful space. Go, uh, but away from the subliminal to the down to earth and <coughs> Sainsbury's boost for the sandwich, go, Delhi Lights, you know. Uh, Warren Point based company Delhi Lights recently secured an impressive 50% increase of foodstuffs supplied to Sainsbury's. That's, that's yeah, well, Delhi Lights, Delhi Lights, uh, that's Delhi Lights. Uh, more important than that would be uh, Jackie Reed and Brian. Jackie Reed and they and lost. Bri and Brian Reed and they lost. They lost their, I was at their mother's funeral yesterday. Yeah, we. Yeah, we've, and uh, yeah. There, there's no doubt about it. The, the Delhi Lights business in this area, the uh, the, t the one mm. in Monon Street here and the one in uh, the Keys, uh, the one in Warren Point, Caroline in Warren Point, and Adele yeah. in Dundalk. They are all fabulous enterprises. Obviously, just celebrated 20 years this year, so I'm sure their mother was very proud of what the girls had Absolutely, achieved. and she passed away quietly, and well done to them. Thank you very much for coming in. I'm going to play you a piece of music now. And, uh, you know, we were talking about the place on Daisy Hill, the place in the prayer room and whatever. Wonderful New Zealand with, of Irish provenance singer, beautiful uh, lady, Hayley Weston. Uh, and she's going to say, sing for us now, prayer. So thank you for coming. It's nice to see you.